Hello everyone, my name is Barry Lacey and I'm the Historian in Residence with Wexford County Council's Library and Archive Service as part of their Decade of Centenaries. And today I'm going to be bringing you a talk entitled It Happened in March 23, Reflections on the Irish Civil War in County Wexford from March 1923. We're going to be looking at some of the, in some of the incidents that occurred in the county during this period and the individuals involved. By 1923, the Irish Civil War had been raging for over six months. In County Wexford, as elsewhere throughout the country, anti-treaty IRA waged a guerrilla war against the National Army forces of the Irish Free State. Despite the latter being in control of the county's towns, instances of raids, ambushes and the destruction of infrastructure such as railways were still a regular occurrence. To counteract this growing unrest, the Dáil passed emergency legislation referred to as the Public Safety Bill in September 1922. This allowed for the execution of those captured bearing arms against the state and required only the signatures of two National Army officers. The first executions occurred in mid-November in Dublin. In relation to County Wexford, Liam Mellows, who had Wexford connections through his mother, was executed in, in December 1922. The first and only such executions in County Wexford took place on March the 13th, 1923, when three anti-treaty IRA members named James Parrell, John Crane and Patrick Hogan were shot by firing squad in Wexford jail. In late February 1923, Parrell, Hogan and Crane, together with three others who were named as William Parrell, brother of James Parrell, Mert Walsh of Cloney Rand to Munn and Barney Cosgrave, a Limerick volunteer attached to the Wexford column, decided to rest at Hoare Town near Timon. While Barney was away, the others were surprised by Free State soldiers, arrested and taken to Wexford military barracks where they were charged with being in possession of firearms. In a subsequent military tribunal, they were found guilty. Richard Mulcahy, in a visit to Wexford earlier in January, ordered that the county hall, formerly the county jail, be commandeered for military accommodation. The three, along with other prisoners, were transported here prior to their execution. Born in 1898, James Parrell was from Clover Valley to Munn and was just 25 years of age at the time of his execution in Wexford Jail. A farmer's son, he had served with the Irish Volunteers and IRA from 1917 onwards, taking part in the Irish War of Independence. He had held the rank of an IRA officer for the Timon Company, but was a lieutenant second in command to an anti-treaty flying column at the time of his capture in February 1923 at Hoare Town House, Timon. He had three brothers, all of whom had joined the IRA prior to the truce in July of 1921. Patrick Hogan was 19 years of age at the time of his execution. He was from William Street, Mexford Town, where he worked as a blacksmith with his father and had served with the Irish Volunteers and IRA from 1918 onwards. John Crane, born in 1904, was from Clooney Ran to Mull, and had served with the IRA from 1919 onwards. He was just 18 years of age at the time of his death, and was a neighbour of James Parrell, and worked as a shop assistant. He was the youngest of three, and had one brother serving in the Civic Guards, and another in the National Army. In the days following the executions, notices appeared in the local Wexford newspapers. It was reported that the men were attended to by Reverend M. Wickham and Reverend P. Walsh prior to their executions. And the following day, it was reported that members of Common Amon recited the rosary outside the county jail and marched through the streets of Wexford Town. The official executions in Wexford Jail did not bring an end to hostilities in the county. On Friday evening, the 23rd of March, a lorry carrying Free State troops from Wexford to Enniscorthy was ambushed by anti-treaty IRA at Kyle Cross. Free State soldiers under heavy fire sought shelter in a nearby cottage and began firing back on their attackers. During the firefight, an attempt was made to set ablaze the Free State troopers' lorry, but they repelled the attempt, leaving one anti-treaty soldier wounded. After a while, Free State reinforcements arrived from Wexford town and gave chase to the retreating anti-treaty column. In the ensuing activity, Matthew Parrell, a brother of the executed James Parrell, was captured. Free State troops spread out into the countryside in search of the column. At Ballyboggan townland, Free State troops encountered a party of four anti-treaty IRA, and a firefight ensued, 
resulting in all four being shot and killed. These men were Martin Nolan, John Lacey, Dennis Lacey and John O'Connor. Martin Nolan was from Ballandoni, New Ross, and worked as a coachman employed by Captain Johnston Bridges. He had become involved in the Republican movement from 1916 onwards and was 25 at the time of his death. John Lacey was aged 24 and from Barracks Street in Wexford Town. He had worked as a railway clerk for the Great Southern Railway and had served with the Irish Volunteers and the IRA from 1918 onwards. John O'Connor was 34 years of age and from Hospital Lane in Inniscourt Town and had previously been working in England and returned to Ireland in 1922 and took part in the Civil War. John's brother Henry had been killed a year previously during the Truth period while on a raid near Ferns for firearms. Dennis Lacey was 27 and from Blackwater County Wexford and served with the Irish Volunteers and the IRA from 1917 onwards. On Friday the 24th of March, the evening following the Kyle ambush, four Free State soldiers named Lieutenant Thomas Jones, Private Patrick Horne, Private John Croke and Sergeant Edward O'Gorman were in McCabe's public house at Ballock Adamstown when they were surprised by a group of anti-treaty IRA. A short time afterwards, three of the men would be dead and another seriously wounded. There are conflicting accounts as to how the four Free State soldiers came to be in McCabe's pub on the night. The military archives file of John Croke states that he and Lieutenant Jones went to investigate an attempted robbery by armed men on the premises. In contrast, a letter in Horne's file from a Commandant S. Gallagher stated that Horne and two other soldiers went to McCabe's and caused a disturbance, and subsequently Jones and Croke were dispatched to the pub. It was also noted in that same file that the men initially left their post without permission, but the military archives state that this is unlikely as any negligence would have resulted in applications under the Army Pensions Act later submitted by the deceased men's families being rejected. The families of all deceased would later receive the gratuities, therefore discounting any such accusation of negligence. Regardless of the circumstances, what is true is that a group of anti-treaty IRA entered the premises, one of whom was carrying a Thompson machine gun and ordered the men to put their hands up. Private Croke attempted to reach for his revolver and was shot and wounded. Following this, the three others were taken away and shot, their bodies later discovered in an outhouse at, at Adamstown. Expanding on the story further, the Echo newspaper reported that the three men had multiple bullet wounds to their bodies. The subsequent inquiry into their deaths would return a verdict that all three were deliberately shot at Adamstown by persons unknown. According to the South Wexford Brigade activity files, the executions were a reprisal for the Wexford executions. We're referring to the shootings of Parl Hogan and Crane by we at Wex Wexford Jail earlier that month on the 13th of March. Lieutenant Thomas Jones was from Dublin and had worked as a labourer before joining the National Army. Sergeant Edward O'Gorman was from Kilkenny. He was a former school teacher and member of the British Army. Private Patrick Horne was from Callan in Kilkenny and previously fought in World War I in the Royal Irish Regiment. On the 25th of March, the day following the execution of three Free State soldiers at Adamstown, two men named Michael Furlong and James Purcell were chatting to some girls at Phil Murphy's Gate, Old Court, Adamstown. Suddenly they heard the sound of vehicles travelling up the road and the men headed into a nearby house. The vehicles, which carried Free State soldiers, halted outside the premises and both Michael and James made their way into an adjacent field. While jumping a ditch, Michael Furlong was shot and fell wounded, and he would later die of his wounds. James Purcell would later recall during the inquest into the incident how he heard noise, possibly shouting, but no cry to halt from the Free State forces. It was stated that Michael had previously been involved in the volunteer movement, but since the truce of July 1921 had taken no active part. The coroner in the inquest, a Dr Furlong, stated that death was caused by a single bullet wound to the chest, fired from some distance away. The officer in charge of the Free State Forces on the day recalled seeing both men, after which he halted a patrol. Observing them running, he called on them to halt several times. After they failed to obey the order, he fired several shots over their heads. 
After this, a second volley was then fired in the direction of Michael and James. The Free State troops reportedly then came under fire briefly from elsewhere. They returned fire back in the direction of the shots, after which the firing halted. The officer and his troops then retired to the location where Michael Furlong was lying still alive. Some of the Free State troops administered first aid to Michael, but he died of his wounds. The jury found that Michael Furlong died from a gunshot wound inflicted by the military in the discharge of their duty, owing to the deceased failing to halt when called upon. Michael Furlong was 20 years of age at the time of his death. March 1923 was one of the fiercest months of the Irish Civil War in County Wexford. During this period, the first and only official Free State executions took place in the county, with the shootings of Parrell, Hogan and Crane in Wexford Jail. All three men were veterans of the Irish War of Independence. The divisions created by the Irish Civil War are best evident in the case of John Crane, whose brother served on the opposing side with the Free State Army, while another brother joined the Civic Guard. The executions enacted by the Free State in Wexford did not quell tensions, with attacks continuing. On the 23rd of March, an ambush at Kyle Cross led to a conflict that would see four other men dead. The case of one of these men, John O'Connor, serves to highlight how tragedy struck some families more than once, having lost his brother during the truce period less than a year earlier. The following day, on March the 24th, three Free State soldiers were shot dead in Adamstown. Although this was noted as being a reprisal for the official executions in Wexford Jail, the fact that it occurred the day after the shootings following the Kyle Cross ambush suggests that one may have influenced the other. Similarly, the shooting of Michael Furlong occurred the day after the executions at Adamstown, when tensions were high. The four incidents discussed, although being separate, are all related and influenced by one another. They highlight the complex nature of the Irish Civil War and the relationships between the individuals involved, which allows us to better understand the past going into the future.